Welcome, everybody. Um, we're here tonight to celebrate our 16 new students who've been accepted to the nursing program here at the University of Jamestown after they've been working hard to um, meet all our requirements. So I think they're just as excited as we are to be able to welcome them. My name is Kim Ash. I'm the department chair and associate professor here at the university. And I would like to welcome all of you tonight, not only to celebrate all these sophomores being inducted into this ceremony, but we also want to celebrate our juniors and our seniors who are here to support all of you and um, show you that you can survive and come out fairly unscathed. Um, but they're all alive. Nobody's died yet. And um, you guys, too, will be just fine. I'm also really excited to welcome tonight our second award recipient of the University of Jamestown Nursing Excellence Award. Um, and she'll have an opportunity tonight to speak to all of you, and I hope you really listen to the message that Alicia has prepared, just specifically um, for you sophomores as well as the juniors and the seniors. So before we start, I would like to make this where I can make it better, not as tall as maybe the next person. Terry, you're gonna have a problem. <laughs> okay, I'm just, I'm just gonna hold this, that's gonna be better. Um, I just wanna take two minutes to introduce some really important people that are with us here tonight. First, I'm going to introduce all our nursing faculty and staff, so when I call your name, please rise and turn around and wave to everybody. So with us here tonight, I'm just gonna start on my left. We have Andrea Bondarud. And Dr. Penny Breeze. Sherry Gunderson. Wendy Hager. Dr. Terry Rittenbach. And everybody knows I love my nursing faculty team, but I really, really love my Queen Katie. Katie Webster, she's our administrative assistant. And I don't know if we have here tonight Kara Falk. Nope. Um, Kara Falk and Sydney Johnson and Wendy Hornbuckle are three of our adjunct faculty who assist us in this program, and so I just want to um, call their name out and just appreciate them. <clears throat> I also would like to um, take a minute just to welcome members of the university administration who have been and continue to be very supportive of our nursing department. So when I say your name, will you also please rise and wave to everybody? Dr. Paul Olson, who is our provost and executive vice, vice president. Dr. Chris Redfern, dean of the undergraduate college and associate provost. Cresha Wiest, chief financial officer. We also have with us, this, oh, and Dustin Jensen, who came in. Um, oh, Dustin, what's your title? Dean of students. Does that sound good? <laughs> we also have Dr. Michelle Selinski and Dr. Elizabeth Naglak. They are two professors in our biology department who have supported these students in their prereqs and will continue to do so. Um, two other special guests that we have. I don't know where Darren is, Darren Peterson. Dr. Polly's husband, um, she can't be here tonight. She's out doing other university business, so Darren's here to support all of you. And Logan Adams, also here in the front row, Logan is here tonight to serve as our photographer and videographer. Do you guys see how much support you have? I think this is really cool. The next two thing, people that I'm excited to um, present are Travers Cox. He is the coach of the men's volleyball team, sitting there in the back row, because we have a men's volleyball player. I bet you can guess who that is, Kingsley. And also, um, the whole men's volleyball team, can you stand and rise, I think is... <laughs> I just love this school. So Travers rearranged volleyball practice time schedule so that they can show support to Kingsley. 
And I just think that is really awesome. And we're also here to support you and the rest of you as well. Um, the other, the last visitor that we have that I would like to rise is Trisha Jungles. Trisha, um, not only a good friend of mine, she was the award recipient last year of our Nursing Excellence Award. And she came back and brought what we call her girl gang with her, a bunch of nurses from JRMC, just to support all of you guys and let you know how welcome you are um, into this profession and clinicals at JRMC. So last but not least, with the juniors and the senior students, please rise. We would just like to acknowledge you and all the hard work that you've put into the program and for the way that you represent us and that we hope that you just reach out to this sophomore cohort and make them welcome and if they're struggling, just help them. Thank you. <clears throat> so sophomores, why be a nurse? to help people, right? There's just lots of different reasons. That's a very popular question. People will ask you, like, why do you want to be a nurse? I think we asked you in your essay something like that, and we got a lot of different answers. You can Google why to be a nurse. I know that because I did. I, I Googled that. I found some answers. The answers were career growth, diverse opportunities, flexible scheduling, stable income, other answers I found, which I love much, much more than those, were to make a real difference in someone's life, to offer hope, to celebrate with our patients, to positively impact individuals, families, and communities, and to care for those in the most vulnerable times. All of these responses are true, and you all have your own reasons as well. Many of you shared your reasons why on your entrance essay into the program. But whatever your reason, we are very honored and we are very grateful that you chose UJ Nursing and to be a part of our team. So sophomores, just a short list of a few things coming your way. Are you ready? <laughs> 7 a.m. classes, 7 a.m. labs and clinicals, four, five, eight, and 12 hour clinical experiences at a multitude of sites such as Jamestown Regional Medical Center, Central Valley Health District, and Carlson Center, North Dakota State Hospital, Sanford Fargo, the Heritage Center, and that just names a few. Calendars and schedules that resemble a juggling act, which you've already seen, right? Kind of crazy. Holding your patient's hand, watching both life and death enter and leave the world feeling like you live in or, or Lady McKenna Thiel's Nursing and Science Building, the library and the study rooms. Is that right? Yep. <laughs> learning, lots of learning, comp competency checkoffs, high fidelity simulations, care plans, papers, quizzes, exams, ATI, Davis. What am I forgetting? <laughs> A lot, right? <laughs> Harding, <laughs> Erden. All kinds of things. ACLS, pals, I could go on and on, but I won't. Um, food by your professors. Here's the fun stuff. Movie night. Laughing and crying with those seated right next to you. I promise you it's going to happen. We know you did not get here alone, though. You have family members, friends, and teachers, and roommates who have been your encouragers. Perhaps some of them are here tonight celebrating you. We also know that you cannot do nursing school alone. This is something that the juniors and seniors will attest to. And luckily for all of you, you don't have to. You have a lot of cheerleaders in your corner, as well as a whole men's volleyball team, right? You're cheering for all of them. <laughs> so we have a little something for you here tonight. It's just a small token for you to pass on to your encourager, your cheerleader. Um, share it with them when you see them next. And if they aren't here, you can take a picture of it and send it to them. So with that, I'd like to introduce Sherry Gunderson and Wendy Hager. So it is with pleasure and excitement that we will now welcome the nursing class of 2026. These 16 students will carry on the tradition that began back in 1947, when the Jamestown Hospital School of Nursing, 
now known as the University of Jamestown. Those faculty welcomed their first class of nursing students, and you have more than they did. They only had five. <laughs> we invited, um, uh, we invite all of you nursing students and the juniors and seniors to come to the lobby area where the nursing faculty are housed, and you'll see up on the wall Marilyn Solana Rich Richter's original diploma, which hangs up alongside a picture of the other four graduates. So and that was in 1950 that they graduated. So this is part of a tradition that you're carrying on as a UJ nursing student, and we are so proud of you. You've already proven yourself worthy to be in this nursing class. As your name is called, please come forward over here for your token of gratitude to share with someone who has encouraged you, or like we said, you can give them a picture. Um, and so I'll be calling your name, and um, so you can uh, come over, and then when you get back to your seat, you can sit back down again, but pause for Logan. Mm -hmm. So Samantha Amsler. Allie Crockett. <laughs> Kennedy Fellers. Delaney Fink. Reese Floyd. Brenna Held. Anna Heenick, <laughs> Tiffany Jewett, <laughs> Tally Cadis. Megan Larson. Morgan Lee. Casey Mitchell. Ashley Olson. Kingsley Umolan. Yeah! <laughs> Kylie Vining. And Hallie White. And we'll pass on to Terry.
Good evening, everyone. Well, it's an exciting night. We're, we're thrilled to be accepting our sophomore class officially into our nursing program. And we're also very excited to introduce our second annual recipient of the University of Jamestown's Nursing Excellent, Excellence Award. Reach it. You know, there's nothing that we as faculty in the Department of Nursing are more excited to do than to share with all of you the great things that our nursing alumni are out there doing. It, it excites us. Tonight, I would like to introduce to you the individual that our nursing faculty selected to receive the 2024 Nursing Excellence Award. Uh, this past summer, my granddaughters and I chose a little project, and we uh, ordered intent bracelets. And on that bracelet, we had to pick a word, and that word was to tell the story about us. So we had long conversations about their words, what they chose. And I couldn't help but think about that activity, because last night, I had a very long conversation with our recipient, and that's what we talked about, words. Words that describe us, words that embody who we are. So I don't have one word for this recipient, but I have a few. Here they are. The first one is passion. And uh, you, you will see right away, this individual has a passion for life, a passion for God, a passion for her family, and a passion for this great profession that she's in, nursing. A second word that we talked about a lot last evening were values. Values. That she was willing to stand on, and it helped her make some pretty tough decisions in her career. A third word was advocate. She's a strong advocate. You'll see that right away in her stories. Uh, of not only her team, her fellow nurses, but also an advocate for her patients, what we all strive to do. And then the last word that I thought of for her was service. So our uh, recipient this year is Alicia Sandage Renteria. She earned her Bachelor of Science degree in nursing in 2011 from Jamestown College, now University of Jamestown. She continued her formal education by completing her Master's of Science degree in nursing from Walden University in 2016 with a specialization as a family nurse practitioner. Alicia is a certified nurse practitioner. She says, I see about 20 to 25 patients every day at Riverway Medical Care Practice Clinic. Prior to this, she supported the post-surgical medical division at a level three academic medical center for over a decade. Her research and practice interests included early recognition of clinical deterioration, safe enteral nutrition practices, missed nursing care opportunities, and prevention of hospital and community acquired conditions through fundamental nursing care. Got that? Yeah. <laughs> Alicia is a member of the American Association of Nurse Practitioners. She has served as the president of the Academy of Medical Surgical Nurses for the local Central Valley chapter. She's a published author and has received the Patient-Centered Care Award and Advancing New Knowledge and Innovation Award. Alicia has been in several leadership positions throughout her career. She co-chaired a quality focus team. She chaired the Surgical Site Infection Discharge Task Force. She led quarterly didactic and hands-on sessions for a nurse residency program. And she was a lead facilitator and content creator for an ultrasound-guided peripheral IV course, and many, many more. Her areas of experience were in acute care, cardiology, medical, post-surgical, mental health, gerontology, neurology, orthopedics, and forensic nursing. 
Alicia has lived service. She's volunteered for a variety of programs. She served as the nurse liaison for street medicine. I thought that was interesting. It's a program where health care was given to homeless encampments. She was the nurse coordinator for DocBand, Doc Band, a program that provided hands-on and didactic training for those interested in healthcare profession. She also volunteers as the nurse liaison for health force partnerships, speaking in schools and promoting careers in healthcare. And finally, she volunteers in a variety of capacities for her church and community. Alicia was born and raised, not in California where she is, but in Deadwood, South Dakota. She lives in Visalia, California with her husband, Eddie, also a JC grad, in 2006. They own and operate a private personal training center as well as an online retail company called Purchase with Purpose. Eddie and Alicia have two children, Eduardo and Emma, 11 and 5, and in August, they'll be welcoming a new baby. Please join me in welcoming our 2024 recipient of the University of Jamestown Nursing Excellence Award to Alicia Sandage Renteria. Oh, thank you, Terry, and thank you, everybody, for coming tonight. I am uh, deeply honored, and good thing we've got this going on for short people. Okay, I am deeply honored uh, to be invited here this evening, and with a humble spirit, I am elated to accept this gracious recognition. However, I'd first like to recognize the incredible University of Jamestown, uh, specifically the leaders of this prestigious and respected nursing department. I am very proud to call University of Jamestown my alma mater. Certainly, we should be recognizing you, Terry, and Kim, your entire team, uh, for your profound commitment to the profession and um, to this community, really. Uh, to be the recipient of an award from somebody whom you respect and admire so much, it, it seems a little silly, uh, to be honest. We should be flipping this around, but we'll just we'll humor me tonight. And congratulations, uh, Trisha, as the former recipient of the award. Um, what a great idea, and what a cool ceremony. How amazing. I am so proud of you guys, and so proud of you guys. I, I know what it takes to graduate from this program. And I'll tell you um, that I felt better prepared than 95% of my peers. I mean, I'm a highly confident person, but I do believe that uh, the preparation that we received here at the, at the university is, is bar to none. And so this was a beautiful ceremony, uh, and it certainly shows how much passion and dedication has gone into the detail um, to show these um, people just how, how appreciated they are um, in the profession. And I always say you should go where you're celebrated, not where you're tolerated. And um, I think it's clear how much uh, they value the students here. And I think it would only be right and just uh, to honor and recognize all of my mentors um, that have gone before me. And there are far too many to name individually, um, but they have left an invaluable impact uh, in my life that I believe has changed the trajectory of my entire family tree. And um, believe it or not, some of my greatest inspirations have not even been nurses. And it just goes to show you <clears throat> that everybody has value to add. And I had made a terrible mistake of um, allowing my profession um, to become my identity, um, but I think it's about who you are as a person and not what your title is, um, because I was once told that you can be a leader um, without a title, and that's the truth. 
One thing I've come to appreciate um, is the supporting village, just like Kim was alluding to. You do not graduate nursing school by yourself, that's for sure. Um, and you can't get your graduate degree with a toddler working full-time, running a company um, <laughs> without help. You can, but I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> um, I, I am just so thankful for my husband, my in-laws, friends, people who dropped off meals, um, you know, people who would watch our, my, ki my kiddo so I could go to clinicals. And so um, I think it's a scoreboard uh, for all the ways that people uh, contribute. So thank you for everybody who came to show the support, not only you know, for myself, but for the, for the nursing students. So congratulations, nursing class of 2026. I am incredibly proud of you guys. You're halfway through A&P, yeah? You've, you've survived chemistry, micro. <laughs> I remember the pain. Um, and now in my day-to-day, -day, I highly regret not paying attention more um, in A&P and micro. So hope you guys paid attention. <laughs> Because every day I'm like, dang it, what is the glomular filtration rate? I don't know. <laughs> so anyway, I think tonight we can learn from my mistakes, and there are plenty to go around. Um, and I would like to, to claim that I, I always told people that I was the starting point guard uh, for Jamestown College basketball team. That's not true. That's completely false. Uh, <laughs> but Dr. Mahoney said, that, said, didn't your wife play basketball? Yes. So reputations, they will follow you. <laughs> um, the last time I stepped foot on this stage, I publicly swore up and down that I would never in a million years work in a hospital. And guess where I spent the last 12 years? That's right, in a hospital. <laughs> and uh, I had absolutely everything and nothing figured out all at the same time. And uh, I also recall saying that nursing research was quite possibly the most boring concept that ever lived on the planet. I know. I'm so sorry. I just hurt Dr. Penny's feelings. I know. But you don't know what you don't know um, when you're a dumb 19-year-old. You're 10 foot tall and bulletproof. So what I'm saying, you guys, is... I literally stood on this stage and said, I am never going to do that, and I am never going to do that. And guess where I ended up? Because God has other plans, that's for sure. Um, and it's funny, I've developed a reverence and a passion for, <laughs> for conducting research with the specific interest of preventing hospital-acquired conditions. Um, my mom was terminally ill. She was going to pass away regardless, but her death was hastened um, by a medical error. And medical errors, um, I would bet to, to, I would almost guarantee that one in five of you have experienced some type of medical error, some type of negligence. Um, but I will caution you to place blame on the healer or the staff person um, because people don't come to work to make mistakes. It's the system that's designed to increase risk and um, Boy, was I a judgy little one. Um, I would come to my boss and I would say, can you believe that this nurse did that? And then she would just let me talk, let me finish. And she would remind me and she would say, Alicia, do not judge others by the high expectation that you set for yourself. And now that did not mean that I was going to lower the bar because Alicia doesn't lower the bar not even a tiny bit, but we are going to meet you where you're at, and we're going to help you, um, but it's not going to be without accountability. It's not going to be without hard conversations. It's not going to be without coaching, redirecting, pivoting, and adjusting, and if you can't handle it, you better, you better, get, some, better get some tough skin right now. Um, the first lesson of the evening, um, you know, if I may, and, and I won't take too long, uh, too much of your time tonight, maybe 15, 20 minutes, but the first lesson of the evening, I think, is just to keep an open mind right? Um, you don't know what you don't know, and boy, does time have a way of humbling all of us, doesn't it? And I can remember entering the nursing program feeling wildly underprepared and scared of the commitment, wondering if I could focus long enough to even pass the test, um, or even afford school books at that. And you guys are getting a, a special edition of Unmedicated Alicia. There's a reason why I had so many experiences uh, in my field. And that's the great thing about nursing, is that you can go and do forensic nursing, and then you can go into the OR, and then you can go into primary care, and then you can teach. So you guys are getting full access here. <laughs> Um, thank you, for ter thank you, Terry, for believing that my experiences will add value to the lives of these bright young nursing students. 
And if I may, I'd like to take you through a few highlight reels. And this highlight reel may not look like the ones that you're used to seeing. And someone said to me once, um, it is your perspective. Well, your perspective will either be your prison or your passport. And that's the truth. And I just believe, it's my personal belief, that you shouldn't share your personal vulnerable trials and challenges unless it's going to help someone, unless it's going to inspire someone, and unless there's an important lesson to be learned. And God will use some of your deepest wounds to fulfill your life's greatest purpose if you allow him to do so. And I resisted for 18 years, so I feel pretty qualified to talk about that. Um, When you're fueled by a deep purpose, you just navigate life differently. You show up every day with a ferocity that just requires no sleep. You're fueled by joy and purpose, and you no longer rely on extrinsic motivation to get up and do the right thing. So at the age of 17, after losing my mom to cancer, I drove through a seven-hour blizzard to get here uh, with bald tires, might I add, because I'm a great planner. (laughs) $80 to my name, everything I owned in my vehicle, um, only to arrive to know one person at this college who was one of my best friends, Amanda Ranapaw. And uh, the two things that fueled me was the fear of becoming just another statistic. Um, and, and an insatiable desire to be part of something great, something so great that I couldn't even comprehend it at the time. And I didn't want to be stuck in my hometown working at a casino um, on drugs and pregnant at 16. That was not my life, um, but it certainly could have been. And so I share my story in hopes that it will give you hope that if I can do it, you can do it. I had to choose tonight between washing my hair and finishing my speech, so there's a lesson in triaging. The hair didn't get washed, okay? The speech got done. (laughs) So, this is, if I could do this, you guys could do this. This should provide you great hope. Um, But I just never gave up. I got knocked down and I got right back up again. And one of the most important things that you guys are going to need to to live a healthy, successful life are people who aren't going to steal your dream. Because I can't save you guys from barbecue season, and I can't save you from IDK and the bar and all the other distractions that are going to happen. Um, and so I think that you just have to have people that are going to speak life into you, and especially during a season where you don't um, maybe see that in yourself. And so in the few short years leading up to my arrival at the University of Jamestown, uh, this was a general sequence of events. Uh, compliments of a lifetime struggle with drugs and alcohol, my my dad suffered a severe and rare uh, psychiatric psychosis resulting in multiple involuntary stays um, to the state hospital. My childhood home burnt down. Um, We lost everything. Um, The love of my life, my mom, who was also a registered nurse, was diagnosed with terminal cancer, and we were told she had two years to live. Boy, do you wake up when you're told you've got two years to live. And as we tried to rebuild our home in the country and move out of the rental, uh, there was some type of spontaneous combustion that uh, resulted in another fire in that house. And so (laughs) at this point, it was like insult to injury. There was houses burning down left and right. And, um, you know, it just felt like my whole life was just falling apart, really. Um, And and that house, too, burnt to the ground. And, And I often wonder what lesson I was supposed to learn as everything I ever loved was being ripped from the grasps of my hand. And then I stopped talking to God for 18 years. I'm stubborn, huh, babe? (laughs) I moved out of my house at the age of 16, worked full time, found a way to graduate high school uh, an entire year early so my mom could see me graduate. And uh, we lost her two months after after I graduated high school. And on the last day, um, that she could speak before she passed away, I, I said to her, and I haven't, I haven't shared this story often, but I said, you didn't get to do anything with your life. You just, you didn't get to go anywhere, and you didn't get to do anything, and now you're, the time has run out. And she said, I just want my kids to be good people. And from that day on, that's what I focused on. And that was the day I made the decision to come to UJ 
um, while I was standing in Gail's kitchen. Uh, one of my nursing mentors who is uh, here tonight, um, and she is an exciting part of my story. So thank you for, I'm sure you guys had an alliance <laughs> of some kind. So uh, it, to make matters worse, it gets happier here, don't worry. It's, I promise, this is a Netflix show you'd want to subscribe to. <laughs> Looking to fill that void in all the wrong places, I entered into uh, a highly dysfunctional, dangerous, mentally abusive relationship. Boy, I, can, I knew how to pick them. And um, that brings me to lesson number two. And this applies to both men and women, so I'm glad that there's an entire men's volleyball team back here in the back. And thank you for your camaraderie, because you guys are cool. That was good. I like it. I dig it. Um, but this, this applies, ladies, I'm speaking to you. This is coming from a, a female perspective. The partner that you choose is critically important. Critically important. And they will either amplify your spirit and your giftings, or they will slowly dampen your spirit until you wake up one day and you do not recognize yourself. So choose wisely. And you teach people how to treat you. You don't wait to see how they treat you. You teach them how to treat you. And if they do not treat you well, there's the door, sir. I am very thankful for my husband. Um, if it wasn't for that relationship and, and me deciding that I deserve better, I never would have met him. And um, he's also, like Terry mentioned, a Jamestown alum. And I wouldn't have my three amazing children, and I would never graduate to be standing on the stage. So sometimes what God has in store is even better than what you had planned. So as my sister says, if you continue to manifest out of a place of deficit, you will become your own self-fulfilling prophecy. So if your attitude sucks, you better work on it. It's the plainest way I can say it. Um, I was focusing on what God had taken from me, um, failing to realize for nearly two decades um, that we have a choice. And it's a choice. Um, it's not all rainbows and butterflies, but you have a choice to convert pain into purpose and you just have to make that choice. And sometimes it takes a really long time, 18 years to be exact. Your past doesn't have to define you, but it certainly does prepare you. And so briefly, I'd just like to share a couple ways that Jamestown University has just gone above and beyond. Um, approximately 20 years ago, when my husband came here to play from California, uh, he was not dressed appropriately. He was wearing jeans and uh, probably not a jacket. <laughs> and he taught us the walk back method. You walk backwards. Is that a thing? You guys know about that? You, wa you walk backwards so you don't get the wind in your face. And so he, he was doing that. And uh, one of his accounting teachers would pick him up from school, throw him in the car with the, her kids, and deliver him Nephla soup. And um, because of her, uh, he chose not to quit. Um, he didn't come here to graduate. He came here to play football. And who do you guys think that teacher is? That's right, Dr. Polly Peterson. And I didn't even know Eddie then. And so this was before Dr. Polly Peterson was the first female president of the, of the university, which I'm very proud of. And I love her because she is a pioneer and she holds no prisoners and she's breaking glass ceilings and I'm here for it. And so before she was the president, that's the kind of people that you guys are taught by. So don't think for one minute that you guys aren't surrounded by incredible people. She became a little mama hen. Um, so thanks, Polly. Darren, please send my regards to her. So um, my senior year of nursing school, as if senior year of nursing school is not hard enough, uh, we were victims of a, um, an arson uh, just a couple blocks away here. And uh, let me preface, by the way, all you judgy people thinking you know what to do when you're stuck in a burning building. You don't know what to do, okay? Especially if you just took a Tylenol PM and have only been asleep for like two hours. So let me preface that. Um, <laughs> but we uh, opened the front door and we were in the third, third, third story of an apartment building with no exits. And whoever did this um, poured gasoline on the first floor and uh, then barricaded both doors shut. So not only did this person want to burn the building down, he wanted to kill us. <laughs> he doesn't know who I am. <laughs> so sad for him. And so we went to the back bedroom to call the fire department, and I, I'm this, I've got my critical thinking skills on. I'm like, okay, check, smoke inhalation, we're going to die. This is, I, that I can think about. Pulled the comforter down, shoved it under the, the door, and Amanda goes, hey, dude, 
that's a really expensive blanket. And I said, girlfriend, we got problems. I'll buy you a new blanket, okay? Just let's airway first, okay? You stick to teaching. You stick to teaching, I'll stick to nursing. And <laughs> I'm making myself sound really good right now. Um, like I'm the logical one of the situation, but that's not true. Um, I was ready to jump out the window. I was just going to jump right out. And I, I said, I didn't come this far to get burnt up like a crisp. So um, I said, I'm jumping out the window. And she looks at me and she goes, I'm the captain of the basketball team. I'm not jumping out the window. I'm on scholarship. <laughs> And so we did not jump out the windows. All femurs were intact. And we were saved in our underwear by the Jamestown Fire Department. So it was a really good story. We later came to learn after the investigation um, that uh, it was a series of arsons. And so um, you can't imagine how unsafe we felt. And the university, on their own dime, let us sleep in the dorms for a year, for, for months. Um, we, we lived with our friends, um, Corey and Julie and... Um, what a, what a testament. Um, on their own dime, they knew that we couldn't go home, and they let us, they put us up. I mean, that's absolutely incredible. And so a few months after the arson, my dad had another psychiatric uh, episode, and I went to South Dakota, and I sn snagged him, and I drove him all the way to uh, the prairie facility there in Fargo. And, you know, as if nursing school is not hard enough. But when you have to leave your father inside a locked psychiatric facility when people are screaming and they're tormented. And he's looking at you like, oh, please don't leave me here by myself. And he's hoping you're going to come back and get him. That changes you. And these are the moments that propel me forward in medicine. It's not the pay, and it's not the benefits, and it's not the accolades or awards. It's something called intestinal fortitude. So someday... You guys are going to be up here. One of you guys is going to be up here. Your story is going to be somebody else's survival guide. Um, but not if you give up. Giving up is not an option. The only way to, to lose in this situation is if you give up. Because um, you've got amazing teachers that have your back. And the adversary, let's be honest, he, he, doesn't, want a thriving he doesn't want a thriving community. He wants, he wants you guys to not like your classmates. He wants to pitch you against your professors. He doesn't want you guys to go to chapel at 11 o'clock on Thursdays, but I hear that's popping these days, so good work. Um, Polly's very proud of that. And he doesn't want families to stay together, and he doesn't want you to be a well-regulated human. Um, and he certainly doesn't want the campus to pay for um, you to stay so that you can graduate. And, and you know, he's going to pull out all the stops. He's going to distract you. He's going to destroy you. He's going to take your personal relationships, and he's going to just try to destroy it because that's what he does. But we have power over that, and I believe in the power of the spoken word, and so does my mentor, Shelly. Whatever you say is exponentially powerful than what you think. And so if you lack confidence in yourself, I pray that you find somebody that will speak belief into you. And you have to speak into existence what you are and what you want. And you have to choose. You cannot, my, my mentor always says, you cannot think too feelings at once. You can't have two thoughts at once, and so you have to choose faith over fear. Feed the faith and starve the doubt, and watch how the adversary cowers. You have to wake up every single day knowing who you are and whose you are, and you have to say, not today, Satan, not today. My God's bigger than you. He is stronger than you, and you have no power or authority here, so there's the door, senor. In closing, I'd like to share with you um, some of the principles that were bestowed upon me um, in my career. So there's a difference between a fatal mistake and a learning mistake, okay? It, and it's a big one. And you have to be able to adjust the sales because you're going to make mistakes. And if you're not, you're not, you're not trying or you're not being transparent. You will make mistakes. We are not infallible. We are human. And the number one cause for medical errors is communication. And not communicating, guys, is still communication. And it's dangerous. Okay? You can always justify doing more. You can never justify doing less. My boss always taught me that. I could stand up here in a litigation and I can justify why I did more. I cannot justify why I did less. And I've been in litigation, horrifying ones, 
um, things that would make you shiver, the, the, what people can do to one another. Um, and you always think, oh, that's not going to happen to me. I'm not going to, I'm not going to be in a Jayco tracer. <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> you, you will. Um, this is something my, my other mentor says, excellence is the standard, but grace is the word. So extend grace. And I think that's something I should have done a lot more of because I was highly, um, I was difficult to impress and I wouldn't give a lot of praise. And I just came to find out that you're going to be the villain or the hero in someone's story. Someone already knows when they're sucking it up, when they're not doing good, they already know. Um, so if you're going to speak negative into them, do you think that's helpful? No. Not a chance. And it doesn't motivate patients either. And so that, that I'm coming to learn. Um, we can provide excellent nursing care through fundamental nursing practice, like Terry alluded to. Preventing pneumonia through early, am, through early ambulation, incentive spirometry. You guys, that's my favorite tool. Incentive spirometer and the bladder scanner, my faves. It's the best. Do you know how many patients have retention all the time? Yes. So bladder scan away, Q4. Especially if you're deteriorating. Um, uh, preventing skin breakdown, um, and you've all heard the old adage, people die in bed. Well, that's true. People die in bed, so get your butt out of bed. This applies to all of us. People die in bed, and there's a reason for that. Um, they get pneumonia, and they die. So, gosh, isn't this so inspiring? <laughs> Thanks, Terry. <laughs> Thanks for inviting me. Um, so, the, you know, just a couple of things here. Don't forget about the power of the human touch. You know, guys, you're entering into um, a technological age, and I promise you that the patients will never say, like, dang, Sherry, you titrated that, that heparin drip like a boss. You did really good. I'm so glad that you cardioverted me and you pushed the right button. I am jacked about that. They don't say that. They do not. Um, you know, they say things like, she held my hand when I lost my baby. Um, she held my hand um, when uh, I lost my mom. You know, um, they, they say things like, they let me sit in my own excrement for an hour. For an hour. You would go ahead and tell a grown adult to hold their bladder and see how dignifying that is. And um, I pity the poor person on the other end, because um, I don't play around like that. Um, those are just, these are, these are principles, hum, human, humanity, um, basic humanity type principles. And um, you're going to learn that through these professors. You guys will. But they, they want to know if they felt dignified at the end of the day. And you're going to have so many challenges as you come into this system, um, so much as I thought that this was going to be the year that I was going to hang up my badge. And then Terry called and said that, you know, they want to honor me with an award. Um, but I was, ready to, I, I was ready to throw in the towel. And I said, Is it, am, I doing, am I doing the right thing? And so as Terry alluded to, um, I chose to resign my position. I just felt that was the best um, stance that I could make um, in, a, in a moment where I didn't feel like we were doing the right thing. And so, uh, you know, to Kim, the to Kim's opening, be sure you guys know why you want to be a nurse. And it's okay if you don't have a very developed understanding right now. Um, but I'll tell you that during our during COVID, our county has about half a million people, and we were so impacted with COVID that we had bodies lined up in the hospital hallways. We didn't have bathrooms. Um, we didn't have masks or catheters or betadine or saline. Um, our catheter infections went through the roof. Um, staff took their own life. Um, I've, I've lost, I lost friends. We were stapling our N95 masks together and reusing them. And um, I felt like we were sent into battle absolutely underprepared. And that, that makes you really question why you are doing what you're doing. You know, am I leaving my children and my family to make a difference, um, or are we hurting people? And so when you don't know better, you do the best you can. But when you know better, you got to do better. And at some point, there was a point where we should have pivoted, um, and we should not have let pay people perish in isolation. That was probably the most cruel thing I can ever, um, I can ever describe, um, to not let somebody die in the, in, with the dignity of, and the hope 
of, of maybe their husband or their wife or their child. It was wrong, and I, I, I struggled with that ethically. Um, but God, he has a way of coming back around. And so it was our promise to one another, our colleagues, and our promise to um, the patients. And, you know, we can't go back and change that, but we can, we can choose how to respond. And um, a couple practical things, and I'll close up here. Manual blood pressures. You better know how to do them. I will, I would es- I'm going to escort you out of my clinic if, if you don't know how to take a manual blood pressure. That's a disgrace on nursing, so you better, better know how to do it. Um, keep your hair up. <laughs> keep yourself covered. And uh, make sure you're listening to posterior lung sounds. I had a nurse tell me that posterior lung sounds were important. What? Can you believe that, Kim? I about died. I about just fell over. And so that matters, you guys, because you might be in rural North Dakota, and rural South Dakota, rural Minnesota, where you don't have technology. You might have a little cruddy yellow stethoscope that costs 50 cents, and it does barely work. So you better have your assessment skills um, on point. Like Kim Ash always says, normal is a setting on a wash machine. So, <laughs> see, I was paying attention. <laughs> Anytime you could be the other person on that side of the bed. So you better care for people the way that you would care for your own family. And just remember that you are the last line of defense. And that's scary. You will be the only thing that stands between a patient and their grave. And physically, I have put my body in front of a patient and said, We're not doing this. We're going to stop. Oh, do you know who you're speaking to? I am the physician. I am the head of the surgery department. Welcome to the unit. My name's Alicia. This is not happening. So be prepared for that. And you know what? Guess what? Sometimes I was wrong. (laughs) Imagine that. So embarrassing. But you know what? I'd rather look stupid um, than have somebody die over the situation. And nine times out of ten, my instinct was right. And I couldn't put my finger on it, and the labs didn't show it, but I spent 12 hours with that patient, and I'm telling you something's wrong. And something was wrong. So there's a time to back down, and there's a time to stand. And now's the time to stand. Um, This world is getting, it's getting a little sideways, if you haven't noticed. And silence is permission to continue. And I am choosing not to stay silent anymore. Um, and I just think that it's time for us to band together, and I think it's a time for us to bring the nursing. We didn't accidentally become the most, one of the most respected professions, so let's keep it that way, guys. Um, I, I do have the, an expectation that you guys will uphold that um, for us, and we do that through the way we conduct ourselves, because you're always on stage. You're always on stage. The opportunities that I was given, it was in the moment when I didn't think anybody was looking. And then somebody would come up and say, hey, I saw how you handled that situation. And you want to make sure that you did it with grace and you did it with honor. And so that, my friends, is how we're going to change the world um, collectively. We're going to do it one person at a time. Um, So if you're having any doubts, and this goes to administration and teachers and, you know, faculty of of Jamestown. um, If you are doubting whether you're making a difference or not, um, don't doubt that. Because I wouldn't have my family, I wouldn't have my kids, I wouldn't have um, my beautiful life. I have just the most beautiful life that I'm so grateful for. And I wouldn't have any of that um, had Polly not made some soup and, uh, you, you know, just something simple as that. And so um, one thing that I've learned over the years is that crisis reveals character. And it's going to show who you are on the inside and... And kindness really does matter. So um, I am proud to report that we have ditched the fire earth element um, and now have moved on to uh, a new really fun earth element called water. And it's just as destructive as fire, Eddie and I are coming to (laughs) learn as our house uh, flooded for a second time. Um, So I am so glad we are done with the fire era. Um, (laughs) One one a natural occurrence, and one uh, our our two-year-old wanted to see if the mermaid knew how to swim. So I think she did, but that was a $50,000 experiment and three months in a hotel. And so, <laughs> what are you going to do? I, what are you going to do? I think there's so many things that have happened. Um, and some of you probably have stories that make my background look like Disneyland. Um, and so, what are you going to do? 
you, 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 gotta, you have to decide how you're going to respond. And so um, I, I'm also proud to, to share with you all that three weeks ago, um, I threw myself a backyard baptism, um, and that was 18 years. 18 years I wasted. I just wasted. Not, not talking to God, totally kicked him out of my life. What a waste of time. What a waste of potential. And what a lonely and sad situation that has been. Um, because allowing him back in our life has restored um, a love and respect for my husband. Um, and thank you, babe, for being my best friend. Thank you for being the leader of our household. And thanks for doing all the dishes for the last seven years. <laughs> and I don't plan on doing them again. Even, that, was, that was the agreement during grad school. Hey, just you go ahead and you clean the house. And so men, young men, there's a way that you can serve your partners. And that is through honoring them and serving on them. Because to be honest, I didn't have the emotional capacity. I was losing it. I was um, hanging on to the end of the rope. And uh, Steady Eddie was the one who really, I think, held the fort down. <laughs> I coined him that term. So um, I, I, do you guys know who John Muir is? Yeah, John Muir. He is a world-renowned farmer, naturalist, explorer, uh, and inventor. And he once said, by forces seemingly antagonistic and destructive, nature accomplishes her beneficent design. Now a flood of fire, now a flood of ice, now a flood of water, and again in the fullness of time, an outburst of organic life. What does that mean? It, it means that the fire is actually necessary for the ecosystem. It actually, it, it's actually critical for a thriving ecosystem. And so when you think that your world is spinning out of control, you might be actually being set up um, for God's greatest purpose. And I do believe that we have to convert pain into purpose. Otherwise, what's the point? What's the point? Um, so in closing, I just want to thank um, each of you for coming tonight um, and supporting um, these amazing students. You guys, I'm so proud of you. Um, remember how you feel in this moment, because in about four weeks, when you've got your crusty sweatpants and, you're, and you, you're tired and your clothes are dirty and you're hungry and you've got about a thousand assignments to do, shh, just kidding. It was rainbows and butterflies. It was so easy. Um, remember how you feel in this moment. They're like, yeah, right, just kidding. Um, but, but sincerely, I want to thank you guys for um, just supporting the, the nursing department, these amazing students. And I want to thank just the University of Jamestown for uh, believing that I have, you know, enough value to add to people. Um, and that truly, I, I believe that this university, it saved my life. And um, the kindness and compassion um, and that one-on-one -on -one attention that I needed, um, I got. I needed that. I knew I could study and I'd pass a test. But... What these ladies did for me was something that I think now we have to pass on. And so that's I'm, something I'm excited to do. So um, I'm just praying for abundance and prosperity over the entire campus, over their staff and over the students and their families. And thank you for coming to support uh, the nursing class of 2026. That has a good ring to it, doesn't it? Um, and I'm so very proud of you. And I can't wait to call you my colleagues and just know that if you have your hair down at work, I'm going to hit you in the eye with a hair tie. <laughs> so it's, it's a thing. Keep your hair up, your watch on, stay professional, conservative, um, and make sure that we continue to stay, you know, as one of the most respected um, professions um, out there. So again, thank you. Thank you for your time. And I am honored to uh, receive the award. Well, thank all of you for coming tonight, for welcoming and celebrating our newest class and uh, the award that we were able to give to Alicia tonight. Uh, once our students exit the this, this stage, please join us out in the lobby for a reception. Thank you.